Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Lunch Hour So Long with Kimber Bell. My name is Kim Christofferson, and today we're going to be talking about this gorgeous pieced poinsettia table topper that is found exclusively in the most recent Bella box. If you've gotten this Bella box, give us a shout out. Tell us how you like it. Uh, it's been fun seeing everyone's excitement and comments over this. Uh, this is a Bella box that, like all other Bella boxes um, have a limited number. And so this one did sell out and it, sell, it sold out quickly. But if you're interested in getting extra kits uh, to make additional table toppers or pillows and such, um, then we do have fabric kits available, just not the designs themselves. Because as I mentioned, the designs are exclusive to the Bella box. But isn't that beautiful? This is something that I can see making in all kinds of colors and themes. But this one we did more of a Christmassy theme. As you can see, I love the striped binding on there. And then we quilted this with clear blue tiles, clear blue tiles, which you also received two tiles in your Bella box as well. So today what I'm going to do is show you how I pieced one of these blocks um, on the embroidery machine, even with a five by seven hoop. Isn't that great? Uh, so with a five by seven hoop, you can make this whole project. Um, and it's just, it's gorgeous, isn't it? So um, I'm gonna show you how I piece that. And then I'm going to walk you through the steps of using your clear blue tiles to uh, then quilt this all in the hoop. Now we hope that you love these sample tiles so much that you're going to want to find the entire set at your favorite quilt shop to quilt all of your other projects. I got a kick out of uh, something I saw on Facebook uh, just this morning. This is from the Kimber Bellas and Fellas page and our friend uh, Jory Snyder said this. She said, these blocks would be beautiful worked into a larger project. I'm challenging someone to make a lap quilt. So I'm with Jory on that one. I want to hear if you are one that is thinking, oh, yeah, I'll take on a challenge like that. Forget just a table topper or a pillow, but how about something even larger just by re repeating this many, many times? She goes on to say, there's something magical that happens once this block is assembled and quilted. It looks totally different from the online pictures and the instructions. It's absolutely gorgeous and I enjoyed stitching it. Jory, thank you so much for that comment. I couldn't agree more. You know, pictures, yes, there are some gorgeous pictures out there, but until you see this in person and make it on your machine, I, um, there's just a wow factor that is something that cannot be described just through photographs, right? So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as you know, in the Bella box, there is a USB that comes um, in it, and that will have all of your embroidery files that you need for each of the projects that are on this. So I took that and uh, downloaded the designs onto uh, or put them onto my machine over here. You also have the coveted, the most liked thing in the box, I think, and that is the printed instructions. Hallelujah uh, for that. So yes, we absolutely love how gorgeous those are too. And so we're going to be following along with that. So if you want to go ahead and just, you know, sit back and, uh, you know, have a, have a cup of coffee uh, while I show you how to do this first block. And then, like I said, we'll get into um, how to quilt it with clear blue tiles. Now, if you are one that didn't get in on the Bella box, that's okay. You may still be interested in learning the techniques for quilting in the hoop that I'm going to show you today, as well as how to use clear blue tiles on any project that you have. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, this is done with a five by seven hoop. So what I did is I already hooped uh, the recommended stabilizer. We recommend the Kimberbell Lightweight Cutaway Stabilizer. You certainly could also use the Kimberbell Ultralight uh, Cutaway Stabilizer. Either one of those will be great for this project. And uh, so I've hooped that and I've, I put my design on the machine, pulled it up already. Now, one thing to note, I want you to take a look on page five in your instructions, um, part one. 
Um, it says to load part two embroidery file into the machine. Actually, what we meant to say was to load part one into the embroidery machine. If you will just go ahead and match what it shows right there in the picture with what's shown on your screen, you know you've got the right one. You want to do um, part one first, um, and you'll repeat that block two times, and then you'll do part two, which looks almost identical to it, but they're just mirror images. You'll do that again, um, and you'll uh, do that two times. But today, we're just going to do that first block, because once you know how to do the first one, uh, all the rest will be easy peasy. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and uh, low or hoop your stabilizer. This is the light mesh cutaway. And then I am going to just put uh, my foot down and stitch directly onto the stabilizer um, that first pieced uh, block. All right. Now what this is doing is it's stitching an outline, like a template, if you will, of the block that we're about to do. And as you'll see in step three in your instructions, that shows you uh, exactly what that template looks like on top of your stabilizer. And we've actually numbered the sections too, to also help you know where to place your fabric. Now. You'll also know that we've got some pretty amazing kidders here at Kimberbell who put together all of these individual 52 pieces, I believe, of fabric. So it's just easy to uh, just place it and sew it. All right. Now, I would probably recommend, um, you know, a lighter thread. Um, not that it's going to show or anything, but I just like to use usually white. Um, but in this case, I want to see this very clearly uh, and for you to be able to see it very clearly. So I've stitched it in a dark green thread, as you can see here. All right. So the very first thing I want to do is to, as outlined in your instructions, take piece one of your fabric and you're going to place it with the right side facing up. And piece one means I'm going to cover section one. Now, do I need to do this upside down here? No, right here. So we are in section one, this area right here, and I'm going to place this with the right side facing up. Now, I will tell you uh, that these sizes of fabric, they are oversized, so no worries about having enough fabric. They are oversized. They'll be cut down to size a little bit later, and with this white one, well, you don't, it's very difficult to see what is the front and which is the back, but just, you know, try your best, and, you know, no one will ever know if you put that put the wrong side of fabric facing up. But if you were to do this again without a white fabric, always place the right side of your fabric facing up on this first step. All right, once we've done that, we're gonna put it onto our machine and stitch the next step, which is going to be what we call the trimming and placement line. It's a quick little stitch right there. All right, there's that line. And it wants us to cut away the excess fabric that goes beyond that stitch line. Right here. Okay, so there's the stitch line. I wanna cut away this extra stuff, all right? So to do that, I'm just going to take my scissors here, let's go ahead and, oh, that's better. There we go. Okay, I want to trim this away. So I'm using my Kimberbell applique duckbill scissors. And I'm going to just trim up right up next to that stitch line. Notice I trimmed right up to it. I don't need to leave <coughs> a quarter inch or anything. Um, uh, I'm just going to stitch right up close to it. Okay, all right, so once I've done that, then it says to place your fabric two piece, which happens to be this gorgeous solid color. And it says right side facing down, you're going to center it along the line that you just stitched. All right, well, again, this is an oversized piece of fabric. Um, you'll have plenty to work with, and I'm just going to line it up right on top with the right side facing down. Now, similar to the white 
fabric, it's difficult to see uh, whether you have, you know, the wrong side or the right side on this solid fabric. So just pick a side. But normally, if you could see the difference, you would place right side facing down because what's going to happen is that it's going to now do the perfect quarter inch seam across that line. And then you'll flip it over and then you um, have this really fun pieced section of your um, quilt block. Okay, so right now I'm going to put the foot down and then we're going to sit, stitch the seam stitch for that. All right. Okay, here we go. Now notice you've got this perfect quarter inch uh, seam stitch here. And what we want you to do is actually now flip it and give it a little pressing. Now, one thing you're gonna note in the direction directions is that there's a little icon of an iron. If you go to iron this down, you certainly can. What we're saying is that you need to press it down. If you do that, I would suggest taking this off of your machine, obviously, and then placing it on a flat surface and taking a little mini iron. But I'm gonna give you another idea here with a tool that is from Clover and it's called the fabric folding pin. If any of you have used this before, you know how great this pin is. But what it has is it's got some liquid starch in there. And so instead of taking it to an ironing station, I can just uh, gently glide this over the seam that I just stitched, right? And then give it just a little gentle finger pressing and it's as good as if I had taken it to an iron. Isn't that great? So I love that little fabric folding pin. So now you've got the right side facing up. The next stitch I'm going to do is the trimming and placement line and it's gonna go down at an angle this way. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like on the machine. All right, I'm taking a look at the comments. Of course, if you have any questions, I'll try to get to as many as I can. Um, here we go. Now again, I did this all in a, a dark thread color so that you could see it well. Once again, it's not gonna show in your finished product uh, either, but normally I would probably just use white. Okay, now as outlined in the instructions in step 11, it says that we're going to cut any of our extra fabric that's beyond that stitch line. So I'm just going to take my scissors here, cut at an angle right up against the stitch line. All right, notice I went right up to the stitch line. I did not go a quarter inch beyond it. Um, that will happen on the machine itself, as you'll see here in just a moment. All right, the next uh, fabric piece I'm gonna place on there is fabric three. It's another white piece. And just like uh, we did before, we're gonna place the right side facing down and we're centering it along the line that was stitched. That means you're not gonna place your fabric starting at the, at the beginning. Can we get even a closer? Uh, image of this. <laughs> I'm going to make Andrew get his work out today. <laughs> I really want you to see where I'm placing this. Okay. All right. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Okay. So notice when I say centered along the line stitch, that, that line that was stitched goes right here. So that means when I place this next fabric down, centered along the line stitched, remember this is where it began and this is where it ended, I'm just going to place it right up against that line and centered. I don't want to start it right here where the line started, and I don't want to start it right here where the line ended. I want to place it smack in the middle, centered along the line that was stitched, because right now what's going to happen is a stitch line, a quarter, the perfect quarter inch stitch line will stitch right along this area. All right, so let's go ahead and go to that point. Now, 
Mary says, I waited to start this project until I watched today, watched this demo today. Can't wait to sew it up later today. Oh, Mary, I'm so glad um, that this will be helpful to you. You're not going to believe how easy this really is to do. And it's quite addicting, too. Even when I was working on my sample over the weekend, I... Uh, I was thinking, oh my goodness, there are so many possibilities with this. I wanted to get out all my blue fabrics right away and start on a winter theme. And then I was going to quilt it in snowflakes. And then I got excited again and thought, oh wait, I want to do it in spring colors and quilt it with, you know, some flower uh, floral designs that are in Kimberbell.com. There were so many ideas that you can do with this simple piece table topper. Oh, you're going to love it. All right, let's go back to here where I have just sewn the perfect quarter inch thanks to my embroidery machine, right? And the awesome digitizing. And I want to flip this over. So again, I certainly could take it to an ironing board and give it a press with an iron, or I could take this fabric folding pin, just gently run it down that seam, just like so and then flip it and give it just a gentle pressing. All right, okay, we're moving right along. The next step is step 15, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna stitch a vertical um, trimming and placement line for my next piece of fabric. Let's go ahead and go to that point. As you can see, you know what to do. You know the drill now, right? <laughs> what am I gonna do? Well, this was the, the line that was just stitched, so I'm going to cut away all of this extra fabric that went beyond the line. And as you know, you're gonna cut right up to that stitch line. Okay, voila, all done. So, I've done that and now it's time to place my green fabric. Oh, this is one of my favorite fabrics from the Kimberbell Basics fabric line. I think it's called Make-A-Wish if I remember right. And um, this green I'm gonna place facing down. This is a good one that you can definitely see what the right side is and the wrong side. So I'm gonna place right side facing down, centered along the line that was stitched. Just place it there. Okay, and I'm good to go. It's now gonna sew that perfect quarter inch. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> Debbie wants to know if the poinsettia quilting pattern <clears throat> is included on the USB. And Debbie, I'm happy to tell you it is. All right, let's go ahead and come back over here. You know what to do. We're going to flip this over and either press it or we're going to use our fabric folding pin. In this case, I'm going to just gently glide it along there and give it a little finger press. All right, so, you know, I'm showing you this going back and forth and back and forth from the table to the machine, but certainly when you go to do this step with like a fabric folding pin, just keep it on the bed of your machine. I'll do that next so that you can see how I do that. And then just, pr just go ahead and um, finger press it while it's still on the machine. There's really no need to take it back and forth to the table, but I just thought it would be easier for you to see it that way. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our next step, which is step eight on our machine. It's actually step 20 in your instructions, but the machine step is number eight. And this is the trimming and placement line. And I'm going to just trim. In fact, if you can reach it while it's on your machine, then certainly you can do it, the trimming, right while 
is still on the bed of the machine. So I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to trim right up next to that line. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to show you on this camera real quick what it looks like. Let me go to this one. All right, what I did is I just trimmed that up at an angle, as you see. And now I'm gonna place my next piece of fabric, which is another white piece. And I'm gonna place it with the right side facing down, centered along that line that I just stitched. Okay. And now it's going to give me a quarter inch. Let's go ahead and do that. And as I mentioned before, <coughs> you can keep this just on the bed of your machine and then just use your pen to glide it along there, along that seam line, and then just flip it over, give it a gentle pressing, and then you can go on to your next step. Donna says, would it be good to use Kimberbell tape? Yes, Donna, absolutely. Um, if you wanted to, you could certainly go ahead and I'll show it this way. When I went to flip this over, it would be great to use just a little bit of tape and just place it right there. See, I go to flip it over, place some tape, and then it's not going to shift when you go to do your next step. You absolutely can do that. Now I'm going to trim right above that stitch line. Monica says, can't wait to get started on this. Oh, Monica, it is addicting. Like I said before, you're going to have so much fun. And you're just going to continue this process until you have uh, your block done. Um, and then you make four of them. All right. I should back up and say you make two of them right now as the A block, I think is what we called it. Um, yeah, quilt blocks A. And then you make two more that are quilt blocks B so that they're opposite of each other. All right. So I'm going to place this fabric with the right side facing down. All right. Right side facing down. I'm going to stitch the seam and go from there. All right, now <laughs> let's go ahead and go to this front camera. By the magic of television, my friends, I have a quilt block done. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna continue to let that do its thing. I'll get back to it later, but you're doing the same technique, okay? You're doing it, you're just repeating those steps. And before you know it, in just like maybe three, four more steps, you've got this really fun quilt block that's ready to be trimmed. Now let's get an up close over here, yes. It looks a little wonky right now, doesn't it? You're going, huh? Did I do something wrong? I've got some wonky fabric sticking out over here and it's not all lined up down here. That's the beauty of this, my friends, because as you'll see in step 46 of your instructions, that's when you can use the clear, or not clear blue tiles, <laughs> the orange pop rulers to square this up. If you don't have orange pop rulers squared up, you certainly can do it with a regular ruler, but you know how much we love these at Kimberbell. And uh, this is a perfect way to use orange pop rulers, even with a piece block, because all this area, let's go ahead and go to above, all of this is oversized, but we need to square it up to a six and a half by six and a half inch size. So that means this window right here, it just happens to be six and a half by six and a half inches. Boom, 
I'm going to plop it down there, <laughs> center it so it's equal on all sides. If you want to get out an extra little ruler just to make sure, you certainly could. But I'm just going to eyeball this. Okay. And then I can cut this on my rotating mat. I'm not going to cut it here. But if I was doing this, um, I would actually place this on my rotary mat. And then I would cut along here all the way up to the corner channel. I would turn it. Then I would cut along here to the corner channel, turn, cut, turn, cut, and there you go. You would have the perfect size quilt block to get, uh, to get going. Now, another cool thing about this box, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. When I opened up my own kit and went to sew, sew this together, the, even the sashing strips, right here, the sashing strips, this was cut at six and a half inches. So all I had to do was place that onto my finished six and a half inch block and I was good to go. And then when it came time to do my other border strips, they were cut at the exact same size and yada, 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 the exact same size, which is pretty darn cool. All right, so once you've done that, you will then piece together a topper or a pillow if you'd like it to, to be a pillow okay so here we go in your kit isn't that so pretty oh i love it i love it i love it i love it so much and now you have the option of quilting this um exactly how you wish uh, we included two exclusive background quilting files in the Bella box that you could choose from. One would be the poinsettia design, which is that's the one I did here. Okay. And then one was a pr little gifts uh, present design, which, um, you know, I don't know. I, I decided I'm going to do the poinsettia because why not? It's Christmas. So I thought that would be perfect for this. And that's what I'm going to show you today is how I use the poinsettia design. But with the gift packages, someone had mentioned um, a few weeks ago that uh, they were they were thinking, oh, a birthday table topper would be so cute and then quilt it with the little gift packages all over it. Love that idea. Whoever said that, um, I loved it. So that might be another one that I'm going to do because it's just so much fun. All right. So um, I'm going to use the poinsettia. You also got... Um, a square piece of our Kimberbell project batting. We hope you love it because once you use it, you, you're not going to want to try anything else. I promise you. It's so perfect for quilting in the hoop. I absolutely love our project batting. So you got a piece of that as well. And you got the backing. Okay. So you got um, a, a little dotted backing. You may have a, either a red dot or an aqua dot. There was a, a few different ones that were in different boxes. So that's what I've got here. And then uh, you receive two clear blue tiles. So I'm gonna open up this package here. And we gave you two because we know not everyone has larger hoops. And not everyone who has larger hoops want to quilt, wants to quilt with a smaller one. So we, we give you options. you got two different sizes. But the good news is you can use both of them interchangeably. Because with the way our background quilting designs are, are digitized, they all are the same scale. So it's not going to matter whether you use this larger one or this smaller one, it will all look the same in the end. That's what I love about one of the reasons why I love this system and it's so easy to use. So we wanted you to try it out. I think once you do, you're gonna fall in love and you're gonna want to have the entire set. Now, the first thing we wanna do is uh, make a quilt sandwich. So what I've done is I've placed, I'm gonna place this fabric with the right side those polka dots are facing down. But you may notice something kind of funky over here and you're gonna say, what is that? Well, I wanted to show you that usually what we would, we recommend 
again, it kind of all depends on what hoop sizes you're using. But we always like to recommend having the backing fabric be a little bit larger than your front uh, fabric. Okay, and that's ways um, it helps so that when you get closer to the edges of your of your quilt and you're trying to embroider them. Um, if you have your backing fabric a little bit larger, it's easier to hoop it, all right? So if this isn't large enough, if this fabric isn't large enough, this backing fabric for your hoop, not a problem. What I did is I just quickly took some muslin and I just tore off three inch strips to do around all sides and I attached it to the background fabric. And it's not going to matter because when it comes time to, um, to cut this down to size after it's been quilted, all of this will just cut right off, all right? So I did nothing fancy except lay, um, lay one strip of fabric over the other just by like a quarter inch and I just did a quick zigzag stitch. That was just to add more fabric to the back so that no matter what hoop size I used, um, you could certainly uh, have enough fabric to grab on, to, have your hoop grab onto, okay? So again, if you want, this is up to you, but I just added some three inch strips of muslin on all four sides. And then um, now when I go to hoop it, it's gonna be oh, even easier, all right? Um, Shauna says, can we order a second topper kit? Yes, Shauna. Uh, there are some leftover fabric kits over at um, Kimberbell.com. If you click on Bella box, you can find um, some leftover fabric kits for this. Of course, you still need the design in the Bella box to do them, but if you want to make multiples of this table topper or this pillow, um, you certainly can buy extra kits. And if you want to make a quilt like our friend Jory, um, she challenged you guys and I'm challenge I'm I'm right along with her challenging you. I want to see someone make a quilt out of these blocks. That would be super cool. In fact, when you're over there, there are some other extra add-ons you can get for uh, from the Bella box, like the little um the kit for the little boxes, the velveteen boxes. There's some extras of those. There's some Mr. Bottles, some wine bags. There's a few things that you can get over there, okay? Quilt shops will also have the Mr. Bottles and the wine bags as well. Okay, let's get back to quilting, shall we? So we have placed the right side with the polka dots facing down. We're making a quilt sandwich. Also in your kit came the project batting. So I'm going to lay that down in the center. Okay, just eyeball it. No measuring needed. And then I'm going to lay my topper on top of that. Okay. All right. There we go. Now you want to do something that's going to baste these three layers together. Um, you certainly could use like a powder basting. There's a there's a powder you can like sprinkle on there between the layers and then uh, iron it and then that base it. Um, you could use a spray, a temporary spray, spray adhesive. I'm just going to use the spray adhesive to tack that down a little bit. This is just going to help prevent um, that all from shifting. And it's just going to keep your three layers together. As you can see, it does not take much. All right, so now I'm going to do that between um, the front of the fabric and the batting. Okay. Oh. All right, and one more corner. There we go. See, super quick, easy, easy, easy. All right, there, that's feeling good. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to take our paper tape here. And I am going to tape along the outside edges. And that is going to prevent, that's going to prevent your presser foot from accidentally catching on that outside edge and lifting that fabric up. You don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and get a close look of that. All right, this tape is wide enough that I can actually tape 
the edge of my top of my fabric down at the same time as taping uh, the batting down. So the presser foot is not going to take the chance of catching that. All right, we're almost done. And I would just tape that just on barely catching that edge of your table topper because it's all going to be cut off anyway. And then that way you don't have to, um, you know, tear the tape from it. It'll just be cut off when you go to, or it will be in the seam even when you go to um, cut this down to size. All right. Easy enough, right? All right. Now, the beauty of the clear blue tiles. Boom, 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 my friends. Are you ready for this? If you've already tried these, give us a shout out in the comments and let us know how clear blue tiles has changed your quilting world. <laughs> right? It it pretty it's it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's it's not rocket science or anything, but let me tell you, it's uh, it ranks right up there <laughs> with how easy. Um, these make it to quilt any project. In fact, I have to tell you a story while I'm getting um, getting this ready. Uh, one of our gals in product development, Michelle, she is um, a college student, and she was so excited to share with me a quilt that she finished with Clear Blue Tiles this weekend, um, where she, she had made this quilt like maybe a year ago and, in a class, and it was quite big. It was probably around a 60 by 60. And she said, you know, it's been sitting um, in my room for, you know, a year um, because she didn't have the money to then take it to a long arm quilter and get it quilted. But she used clear blue tiles this weekend, got the whole thing done. She used the new butterfly design um, at Kimberbell.com and it's so cute. In fact, on my next What's New Wednesday, which is not this week, but the next week, I think I'll show you because I was like a proud mom. I was so proud of her for doing that. Okay, as I mentioned, you have two different size tiles. For today's demo, I'm actually going to use the smaller 4x6 tile because I want you to see that even with a 5x7 hoop, you can do this. The first thing you want to do is just place that tile somewhere in the center of your your project okay no measuring my friends no math is involved i just want you to eyeball it and see where it can fit in the center i always like to start in the center and i work my way out okay so i can use this same tile the whole time i'm doing this i could also add in if i don't want as many hoopings i could put in this larger tile but because I'm working with a five by seven hoop today, I'm gonna to stick to this one, all right? So I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm gonna do a series of markings. Now, let's take a close up look of what I'm going to mark, shall we? Here we go. All right, there is a, a, a some openings here for crosshairs. There's a center point. There's an open window that says size and then there are these little blue tick marks along the sides. All of these are important to show you right now as I go to mark this quilt, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do when I mark it is I'm going to uh, click on, or click on, wow. I am going, <laughs> I'm gonna click on that dot. No, I'm gonna place my marker on that center dot and just mark a quick little dot. Then I'm going to quickly mark my crosshairs. I am not going to overthink these crosshairs, you guys. I am just going to go zoop, 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 zoop. I like to use make sound effects when I do it even, okay? <laughs> the other thing I want to make sure and mark is that top arrow. Always mark the arrow, and you'll see why this is important a little bit later, but always mark the arrow, okay? No matter what direction it is, you could place the tile this way and mark the arrow that way. You could place it upside down and mark the arrow. So It does not matter, okay? Just mark it. The next thing I want to make sure and do is always write the size inside this window. This is going to make it so that when I go to remove this tile off of my, uh, my table topper, I will remember what size to pull up on my machine because all this, the design sizes on your machine match up with the size that is listed on your tile. So in this case, it says right here, 
It's a four by six finished block. I'm going to write right there, four by six, okay? Very, very, very important. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these little blue marks and on the outside of the tile, exactly where they are, I am going to just make a little mark right there. Notice there's a little mark there. There's a little mark there. I'm not going to draw around the whole tile. No, I'm just going to make a little zip mark, a little zip zip mark, a li another little zip mark, okay? So I'm going to do that around the whole tile and you'll see why that's important here in just a moment. All right, so I've placed this down here. Don't forget, center point, little dot. The arrow with the crosshairs, then I'm going to mark the sides, just little tick marks. Whoops, there we go. Oh, one thing I forgot, don't forget this, the four by six needs to go in the window. Four by six, okay? Because when I go to remove this, I want to be able to know where to place my next tile right? That we want the tiles to line up. If I had a bunch of tiles here, they would be butting up right up against each other. Okay. So the next tile would go right here. Well, I don't know where I ended one unless I gave that little tick mark, right? But because I did the little tick mark, I can now lift this up and place it right up against that tick mark before and do the same thing. I'm going to mark my center dot. I'm gonna mark my crosshairs with the arrow. Crosshairs, crosshairs. I'm going to write in the window what size it is, four by six. And then I'm going to mark all of my corners and my sides. Now, good news, my friends. If you have clear blue tiles already, you could use any of the tiles that would fit your hoop because the designs in the Bella Box come in all the sizes that fit all the tiles. We gave you sample files for the four by six and six by 10, but in reality, you get all the sizes. Isn't that awesome? So cool. Okay, so we've done that. We've marked it. Now, Remember, I put my little tick mark right there. I can now move, I, but I've still got this area to quilt. If you had the entire set of clear blue tiles, you would know, you'll know that there are smaller tiles that could fit perfectly in that section. Not a problem. And you could certainly use them because we gave you all the sizes as well. But I, if this is the only one I have and I'm sticking to it, not a problem. I'm going to lift it up. This is where my little side tick mark was. I'm gonna place it right there. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm marking my center dot. I'm marking my crosshairs, my arrow. I'm marking the size, it's four by six. And then I'm marking my corners and my sides. All right. The reason why you do that again is because you need to know where to place the next tile. Makes sense, right? And notice, I'm even gonna be quilting off of that outer border and that is okay, all right? That is okay because um, we'll be cutting this off uh, to the size that, it's, uh, that that table topper is anyway. It's not gonna matter and it will just look like your quilting has flowed off the edge, not a problem. All right, let's go ahead and go to this this other camera, front camera. So that's how easy it is. I would continue this process until my entire quilt top is done, okay? One thing to know about water-soluble pins, couple things. One, don't press hard with it, okay? <laughs> if you're really pressing hard with this, you're gonna have a harder time getting those blue marks out with water. It can be done, but it's just gonna be kind of a pain. So just lightly mark your mark your tiles, all right? Don't press hard. Um, the other thing is, if you're on, using this on dark fabrics, you could use like a white um, 
chalk and use that to mark them. Some people have mentioned friction pins, and while you can use those, um, and I've used them in the past before as well, the problem with friction pins is that sometimes they also come back as shadow marks, and you don't want that. So I always recommend a water-soluble pin. Um, I would not use an air friction pin. An air friction pin is going to disappear after a while because of the air, and you know, you may do this over the course of a few days. Not that it's going to take you that long. Uh, this will be done in, you know, half an hour. But if you had waited, you might have your marks disappear and then you're going, oh, great. Now I have to remark. So there's, you know, pros and cons to all of them. But I will tell you that if you have any problems with your blue coming out, um, normally, it will just come out with a few squirts of water with your spray bottle and you're good to go. But if you have some stubborn areas due to the fabric that you're placing this on or, or you pressed really hard on it, if you will soak it, um, you'll have better results and they'll all come out. All right. OK, so let's see. Where am I? I think we're we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and start quilting. What I'm going to do now Let's pretend this is all marked. I've only marked a few areas right now. But uh, for the sake of moving on with this um, tutorial, I have marked all the areas. All right. And I need a five by seven hoop. So I'm just going to have to pop this out before it was done. I'll just use another one. Okay. And I'm going to use this hoop to do to hoop the project. The nice thing about this is that you do not have to use extra stabilizer. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, a quilt is going to take a lot of stabilizer. The good news is it doesn't because you have the three, the three layers of your quilt sandwich. You have the backing, you have the Kimberbell project batting, which in itself is like a stabilizer right in the middle. And then you have your top fabric. You just hoop all three layers at the same time. All right. So. I'm going to take my bottom ring and I am going to give it a, a good loosening, <laughs> okay? We want to loosen that up a little bit so it has some more give and then we'll tighten it back up at the end, okay? I'm gonna place this right there underneath my, um, underneath my quilt. Brielle, do we have a, a um, plastic grid? I forgot the plastic grid up here. Right behind me? Oh, that's a larger one. It's not a five by seven, but she's gonna find one, or I can just show you an example here. You know what, that's, well, yeah, if, you, if there's a five by seven grid somewhere, we'll get that. And I can also show you with a larger grid, just so that you get the idea. Grids are awesome. <laughs> and you might be like me and been, and been like, when I got my embroidery machine for the first time decades ago, I saw this grid and went, what is this for? Why would I need it? And I kind of just tossed it aside. Yeah. Well, now you'll want those. If you don't have this grid or your machine did not come with grid, that's okay too. Um, I've, I uh, did a little tutorial that's on YouTube on how to make your own grid. Um, you can certainly use that. Or you could give it a good eyeball <laughs> and make sure it's centered and then move your needle. So there's, there are some ways around it, but I like the grid uh, um, for just about anything to line up. Okay, that aside. I put my bottom ring underneath, and now I need to put this top ring here, and I want to center, can we get an overhead of this? Okay, and I want to center this in the hoop because I want, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I want my center dot and my grid lines to be right smack in the center. Okay, of my hoop. Now this is where the grid comes in handy. So Brielle went to look for my other grid, but I will show you with a larger grid that this kind of can be done, okay? <laughs> Basically your grid is going to drop into that hoop, all right? But you want to, to be centered, so use the grid that comes with the actual size of your hoop, okay? 
And you might need to finagle it a little bit, not a problem. That's why it's nice to have it loose. And that's also why we like the Kimberbell Project batting because the loft is just great with it. Okay, so there we go. I'm eyeballing this right now and I can see it's pretty darn close to what I need. Um, and I could put this into my machine and move my needle to that center point and drop it down and I should be good to go. But if I don't have, uh, or if I have a grid that's the exact same size of my hoop, that's even better. And I will just show you again with this. If this was the exact same size, I would know that that center in my on my grid is going to match with the center dot that I put there in the center of um, where I did my markings. And then I make sure that the crosshairs line up with the crosshairs on my grid and then we're good to go. OK, so not a, it doesn't look like we found our, the five by seven hoop has mysteriously disappeared, but that's OK. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go to this camera here, <laughs> you know, live television. But I used my larger one and, and we're, we're OK. Again, if you don't have your grid or you it has mysteriously disappeared on you, too, I do have the YouTube video showing you how to make your own. OK. All right. Enough about that. Or if you have some of those uh, larger machines that have like the camera feature, that's a great way to use that um, as well to get the center point. My point is at this at this point in the in the um, in the tutorial, what I'm going to do is place this back onto my machine and my needle needs to drop right smack there in the center and then I'm good to quilt this. Now, remember, I marked this as using my four by six tile. So that's what I want to pull up on the machine is the four by six size. All right. All right. There we go. Now I'm using, let's see, I have green thread in here. I think I'm going to actually change it to white. Um, I've seen some people use red thread on theirs, and I think that looks great as well. So I'm going to change that to white real quick. And Andrew, do you have that iPad? Okay, and I also have white in my bobbin. And on my machine right now, I actually have, you know, that piece block up. So I'm going to change that up. Find my four by six design. And then we'll go from there. Okay, that's my present design. So I'm going to hit return and find my other one, poinsettia. It is the four by six. Yes. Hit embroidery. And now we can stitch it. Now, when I go to do this, what I can do is actually drop my needle here. And if it's not on my center dot, I'm going to want it to shift it a little bit. So it is not on my center dot. My eyeballing uh, did not quite work <laughs> as well as I wanted it to. Not a problem. I can just quickly uh, use some arrows to shift. And now that drops. OK, there we go. And now it's going to stitch that poinsettia design right in the exact place I want it to. Robin says, could you use silver metallic thread? Yes, I think that would be gorgeous. Absolutely. If you do use metallic thread, Andrew, um, if you do use metallic thread, I would make sure you, um, you use one of those, like, what is, it's like a, a plasticky net looking thing that's going to help the metallic uh, pull off of your spool a little bit easier. And uh, for sure, you could use that. Try that. Okay. Um, yes, Patricia says use double stick on the back of the inner ring of the hoop 
and that's going to help hold it in place. Yes, Patricia, if I was, you know, having problems with my hoops shifting while I was trying to put one hoop in, in, uh, in the other, I could use some double-sided sticky tape, and we do have a video on that as well on YouTube and on our website. I could place that on the bottom of the inner ring and then put it down on my fabric exactly where it needs to go. And then when I go to place it in the outer hoop below it, it's not gonna shift. So that makes it really easy as well. Okay, uh, let's see. Shauna says, clear blue tiles is helping me finish up my UFOs. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Shauna. Okay, um, Patricia asked if dark, if you can use a white pencil or chalk on dark fabric and the answer is yes absolutely carol says those those waiting for your box it's worth the wait these bell boxes are a box of happiness oh that is so kind of you to say i've not missed any since the beginning addicting yeah they are pretty fun for sure all right uh any other questions they're they're coming through quickly so i'm just trying to see what i can answer quickly and if i don't answer yours uh live then certainly i will go back and try to answer as many as i can as well all right <laughs> cindy says being a math teacher i know there's lots of math involved in this the good news is that someone at kimberbell has done it for you oh there you there you go you're say hi andrew <laughs> who is that bearded guy <laughs> he's trying to get me set up on a different computer <laughs> and i can even hear myself that that's scary <laughs> all right so here we go i can hear my echo Echo, echo, echo. It's all good. Can you, Andrew, can you turn off your volume? I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> you know, hearing myself laugh is really scary. I don't know about that. Okay. Oh, well, I popped it out of hooping. You know what? That's okay because that leads into my next hooping. We already stitched this design and it is now um, the poinsettia 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 and it is smack in the center let's go ahead and i'm okay andrew let's go ahead and go to this up close camera so they can see the poinsettia Let's get there. <laughs> i love it we're having a great time we're having a great time yes we are indeed there we go Ah, isn't that beautiful? I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Okay, so the poinsettia is stitched on there. There we go. And now what I can do is just go to my next hooping. No big deal. So, ooh, someone mentioned variegated thread. Ooh, I would love to see that done in variegated thread. That would be gorgeous. All right, so my next hooping is just that easy. We're gonna repeat what we just did, and I've got my inner or my outer ring, okay? And I'm gonna find my next place, let's see, well, that I had marked, and I'm going to try to center it. <laughs> when someone mentioned about um, doing double-sided sticky tape on the back, this is when you would do it. You would, see this is the front of my inner ring, this is the back. I could use some double-sided tape right here and then place it onto my fabric. And then it kind of lifts the whole thing up as one piece. And then it's easier to fit in the ring. So there's a, there's a little tip for you on that. Okay. So I'm going to use the plastic template grid that isn't quite the size that I need, but it still has the same centering points. So I can get a good idea of if I've got this centered or not. I'm going to first eyeball this. Okay. And then I'm just going to hoop it. That's why uh, if you had, um, oh my goodness, if you had the double-sided tape, that would actually really help right now too. 
All right. Ooh, that's looking good right there. Okay. <laughs> of course, while on camera, I'm having the struggle. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now I can use my plastic temp template grid to make sure that it's centered. And once it is, I'm going to take it over to my machine. I did not change the file, the tile size I used. So I can use the same file, the four by six, and then find the center, drop my needle down so that I make sure that it's centered, and then I can quilt it. All right, so we're gonna let that do its thing. Let me drop it down. There we go. No, that's not quite centered. Let's go ahead and shift my needle. Ah, there we go. I found the center. I've made sure that everything is just one, <laughs> is not uh, folded up on itself. And now I can hit start and it will quilt the next area. All right, so let's go ahead and go to this front camera. I would consider, I would just continue this series of marking. I, a lot of people ask, do you mark everything at once and then quilt, or do you mark it with just one block at a time and then quilt? It's really up to you. I personally want to just mark it all at the same time and then just go for it, just quilt it. And while some of those things may seem tedious, like, oh, I've got to make that marking or that marking, or I've got to rehoop, it really goes by so quickly. And if you've used these before, you, you can vouch for that. It goes together so fast. And before you know it, like I said, I would have this all fully completed and quilted um, probably in an hour. You know, it just really is so simple to do. All right. So there you have it. This was all uh, done with clear blue tiles, of course, um, in, um, I don't know, I don't remember the, the tile size that was used for this, but you can't tell where it started and where it ended. It all flows together. And if you see the back here, can you see the quilting on the back? Sometimes that's even fun to, to take a closer look at. It just all looks like an all over poinsettia design and it is just beautiful. All right. Okay. Um, someone says, I have a four by four embroidery machine and wondered how I could quilt my squares on it. Yay, I'm so glad you, you asked about that with a four by four. Yes, you can quilt it. Now these, these blocks, these blocks, these piece blocks are digitized for a five by seven. But as far as quilting goes, uh, yeah, you can quilt um, anything, uh, even with a four by four uh, hoop. It's just awesome. Okay. All right. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, yes. Julie she says, I get, let's see, let's pull you up, Julie. I get moving side to side. What about moving above or below? Do the designs match up the way that way as well? Yes. Um, that's a great question. Um, let's see, Julie. And the answer is yes. So let me show you a, a few ideas um, of how you could mark this. Let's go ahead and go to the overhead. Okay. And, you know, I start, this is one sorry dump, but I'm going to show you even on here the different possibilities. So I started here, and remember I marked it and then went to the next area, and then I marked it and went to the next area. No big deal, right? Well, first of all, I could start here. I could go to the next area, but maybe I want to turn it this way. Look at that, what that does. That takes me almost right to the outer edge, which would be great, right? I can mark it that way. I could mark it, maybe my my arrow wants to face down instead of up. I could certainly do it that way. The point is, wherever your arrow is facing means that's the top of your hoop. So when you go to quilt this, you always want to make sure the arrow matches with the top of your hoop and you're golden, okay? so. She had asked, can you go, we went from side to side, can you go up and down? Yes, you have the little marking at the top, right? 
look at this. I'll just place this right up next to it. And there you have it. Now I've made another mark. I could place the next one over this way. You have another mark. I could place the next one in this way. I could do a variety of markings. Maybe I want to take my six by 10 tile, if I have a hoop large enough, right? Place it in the center and work my way out this way. I could then take my four by six and place it that way because it goes right up to that outer edge. I could then move it down a little bit and move it down to a little bit. This is what I want you to think about. Let's go ahead and go to the front. This is like you're mapping out your quilt designs, right? It's Think about it like a puzzle piece. If I were trying to cover this entire quilt project in clear blue tiles, I could certainly do that. Do you have to have hundreds of tiles to do that? No, you just have to, you'll just use the, the set that you uh, either received in your bell box or if you buy the entire set with different, oh, I think there's like 20 different sizes, something to that effect, um, to that number. You could use them over and over again in a variety of configurations. What if I wanted to quilt one section of my quilt in one quilting design and then another section of my quilt is in the present design and maybe another section of my quilt is in a swirl design that comes on clear blue tiles and maybe another section of it is done in a candy cane design that comes on the Kimberbell website. It, they all flow together, they all work together and if the clear blue tile covers that space, that's exactly where your stitching is going to go. Now, if you've watched some of my tutorials online, you'll know what I'm about to say. And I'm going to say it again because it's such a, a good reminder of how this system works. I want you to think about a rubber stamp. And if you had a rubber stamp that you needed to dip in ink and then stamp your card with it, right? Wherever that rubber stamp landed is exactly where the design is going to go on your card. Think about that in the way that we're doing clear blue tiles. If I were to take this clear blue tile and I were to dip it in ink like a rubber stamp and then place it right there, on my quilt, whatever area of the quilt that that blue tile covers, that's exactly where that embroidery design is going to land. It's not going to go outside the clear blue tile area. It's going to go, it, they have been digitized to work exactly with these tile sizes. So that means when I go to place my next one next to it, um, I don't have to line anything up. I don't have to line up tails. Um, a lot of people have asked, like, do you line up one end to the next end and drop your, no. As long as these tiles are wherever they're covering and you have used the um, center point to drop your needle down, that's exactly where you start. And then everything just looks like it flows together. You can't see where one, one line begins and one line ends because it just is an overall flow of uh, background quilting, if that makes sense. All right. So there you go. Um, Alice says, if I wind up with a blank space to fill, I use a bitty block. Yes, I love that, Alice. Uh, Alice has clear blue tiles and she knows that there are bitty blocks that come on that set and what bitty blocks are in Kimberbell terms are our two by two designs. And so if there's like a little area that still hasn't been covered like with a tile, um, you could use like a little bitty block, which is a two by two and fill in that gap. And there you go, you, you've, you've quilted now literally all over. The fun thing about bitty blocks too is say for example, I was doing a swirl design all over my table topper and then I wanted um, a bumblebee to be flying through the air. I might take a little bitty block that has that bumblebee, place it somewhere on this this quilt, just like a stamp. Remember, if it lands there, it goes there, it stitches there, then it looks like a bumblebee is flying through my my uh, swirls, uh, swirl designs. So there you go. Um, Kay says, the rubber stamp helped me so much. Thank you for sharing this tip. You're welcome, Kay. Um, yeah, it's just that visual that like, okay, I know that these design files are made to fit these tiles. 
And if it goes underneath there, boom, that's exactly where my quilting is going to land. So let's go to the top camera again. Just again, think about that rubber stamp. I just dipped this in ink, right? So to speak. And I, boom, I placed it there. That quilting is going to land exactly where that was placed. It doesn't even matter if I put it like this. I could put it like that. That's exactly where my quilting is going to land because remember the arrow points to the top of your hoop. So when I go to hoop this, I'm hooping it like that, right? My hoop is facing exactly the area, uh, the, the direction that arrow is facing. Okay. I could place it like this. I could, I could stamp literally all over the place. And that was well, that is where my quilting will land. Oh, don't you love it? And then in the bill box, you also received this fun striped binding, like a candy cane binding, right? And that we did all around the edge. So there you have it for the lunch hour so long. And you guys, I think we kept it to pretty close, pretty close to an hour, just a little bit over. So um, thanks for sticking with me. Yes, uh, someone asked, uh, are there um, more quilting kits? And yes, go to Kimberbell.com. We have a limited supply of extra fabrics. So we put them up on the site. If you need extra fabric for this, it's all there. If you want to do a bigger quilt with the, the same look and design and feel, I can't wait to see it. And you'll use the clear blue tiles to quilt the whole thing. You guys, I got so excited about this this weekend when I made this my sample that, like I said, I couldn't wait to like try it in blues for for a winter theme, and then I want to do it in spring colors for you know April, May, and well, in March, April, May, right? Um, or any time of the year. In fact, um, Carrie on our product development team, she says, oh, I can picture a spring quilt. This kind of looks like maybe some tulips, right? So she says, instead of the red uh, fabrics in this area, she thought putting that in green fabric to look like leaves and then some really pretty pinks uh, together right there would look so beautiful as tulips. And did you see the brand new download uh, for Claire Blue Tiles? on our website. It just happened last week, I think, and they're butterflies. So I'm thinking, okay, that with the butterfly quilting would be gorgeous for sure. All right. Any other questions before I sign off today? Um, let's see. So Linda says, do the clear blue tiles only work with Kimberbell quilting designs? Yes, they have been digitized for the Kimberbell quilting designs. They are exactly the size. And like I said, there's like 22, 20, 22. I don't know the exact number, but there are a lot of design sizes and files that you can use. We did an all over quilting design on this, but certainly you could do more of a custom quilting feel on these as well. So if you wanted your borders to be different, then you would just, you would have to, you would need the, um, the entire set of clear blue tiles because we have thinner clear blue tiles that would work perfect in those borders and again if you just think of it like a stamp then then you know it's it's not confusing anymore uh, that's all you've got to do all right okay um I'm trying to think if there's any other tips or suggestions i could give you on this uh let's see for more information on clear blue tiles there is um a Oh, what do we call this? A, a, a scan. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I've lost the name. Uh, you can scan this little QR code. QR code. Thank you, Andrew. That would be a cute. I'm showing my age, I think. I don't know. Your uh, QR code right there. And you can scan that with your phone. All you do is you turn on your phone and you just hover over that and voila, a link or yeah, a link pops up on your phone. It's 
crazy cool, this technological stuff these days. And there you'll have all kinds of video tutorials on using clear blue tiles and finding out a whole lot more. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy today. It is Thanksgiving week uh, for those of you in the U.S. And I just want to wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving and um, happy holidays uh, for everyone, no matter what you're celebrating in the coming months. Uh, we wish you the very best. Thanks for joining me today. I will see you next week. Uh, this Wednesday, I won't be doing What's New Wednesday. I'll be gone for Thanksgiving, but we'll meet up again the next week for What's New Wednesday. Wednesday with Kimberbell. It's live from my sewing studio. And uh, we just, we get to chat about all things Kimberbell. It's kind of fun. And we will do that. Let's see. It's at 10 a.m. Mountain Time every Wednesday. So not this week, but next week. I'll see you then. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.